So the mechanism of action for Selenexor, which is a, a novel targeted agent, um, is uh, that the medication works as a selective inhibitor of nuclear export. Nuclear exporters are uh, proteins which cycle uh, transcription factors and other regulatory proteins between the nucleus and the cytoplasm uh, of the cell. By inhibiting uh, this nuclear export protein, um, their lead, selenexor leads to accumulation of various uh, protein regulator, regulators um, that leads to reduction in cell proliferation and apoptosis of, cell, of the target cell. So we know that certain malignant cells, including diffuse large B cell lymphoma, is sensitive to this agent. And uh, recent data have shown that it's clinically active in this disease. Selenexor is an uh, exporting XPO1 um, that is over um, inhibitor. X, XPO1 is overexpressed in lymphoma and correlates with a poor outcome. And this oral selective uh, in nuclear transporter inhibitor had shown activity in a preclinical setting and was testing in aggressive lymphoma, in large cell lymphoma in a third line setting, as you mentioned. It was testing number of lymphoma, but the adult study was focusing on large cell lymphoma. These patients have really no options. This was a heavily pre population, and um, they received this was 120 plus patients. And the response rate was um, 36% and 15% CR. So this was something that was very interesting because we had some patients in that, in that setting that we are not uh, very high risk large lymphoma, but multiple failures um, who had very durable response. So as a single agent, this is really interesting. And it was, appro it was approved um, in, in um, last month, in June. And um, based on that, the next step is to try to build up on this activity and on a mechanism that would make a lot of sense combined with other agents. And it is being looked at in a very interesting trial that is looking at a number of different arms, combining Selinexo with uh, chemotherapy, biological agent, checkpoint inhibitors, and to see on how we can build up a new regimen for patients who are not eligible for um, CAR-T or transplant or fail after, uh, after CAR-T cells. The question is review the safety profile of Selinexo. How are the adverse events managed prophylactically? So uh, Selinexor is a, new, a novel agent that has been recently approved for relapsed refractory diffuse Robinson lymphoma at, after at least two lines of therapy. Um, in the trial, about 17% of patients discontinued the, the drug due to side effects and mainly related to GI toxicity, nausea and diarrhea, and also hematologic toxicity, uh, uh, specifically neutropenia and thrombocytopenia. So, it, it, the, the, this trial, when, when, when it was a study in non-Hodgkin lymphoma, actually utilizes higher dose of, of selinexor. Um, in, in the Sadal study, they actually use a lower, a lower dose of, of, of selinexor, but also showed uh, uh, the side effects that I just mentioned. So part of the protocol include the use of olanzapine uh, during the treatment, especially during the in, in, in the day before and following five five days after the treatment, and also they include the um, the use of appetite stimulant, uh, growth factor support to prevent the hematologic toxicity. So it, it, they reported that the side effects were manageable on those patients, but they still they still show a significant rate of GI toxicity specifically. So uh, do you? The, the next question is, do you believe that those modifications may affect the uh, efficacy? As I mentioned in the Sadal study that evaluated Selinexor in relapsed refractory DLBCL, they administer the, uh, the drug at 60 milligrams of day one and three every week until disease progression or development of, of, of uh, intolerance. Um, all patients were, were required to receive, you know, the uh, uh, ondasyndrome, which, uh, which is a common anti-emetic medication for cancer patients, and also uh, the patient discretion, they receive all ansapine to, to prevent uh, nausea. In the original non-Hodgkin lymphoma study that was published three years ago, they include all, all histologies, including DLBCL, 
uh, they tested the, the selinexor uh, at three milligrams per meter square, all the way to 80 milligrams, which are in, in, per meter square, which was the highest dose. They actually they um, break down in in those levels, and it, essentially there was no no significant difference in response rates, even with the lowest dose uh, that they saw an overall response rate is at, at, at 31 percent. But that was across all histologies. So. Uh, based on that data, I don't think that those modifications could have affected the, the, the efficacy of the drug. So uh, I believe that actually was a move, good move from this, the investigators to test a less, less dose, less toxic drug, because it seems that uh, the toxicity was dose related. The next question is comment on the toxicity profile in context to other therapies. Um, so uh, Selinexor has an advantage. The main advantage is, is a single agent and also is an oral agent. So these two factors actually help physicians treat patients because they don't need an IV line. The patients don't have to come every time to get the therapy. Uh, so it, 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 it's convenient. Um, it, this, the schedule could be a challenge. You know, uh, Patients get Selinexor days one and three every week. So I, I, I'm not sure whether patients will be able to remember. You know, it's easy when you, you take a drug every day or you take once a week, but you, if you get two twice a week, uh, you, you may actually forget. So it's important for the clinicians to follow up on the patients or the nurses to follow up on the patients when they receive these therapies. So, and, and also it's important to know that this is a novel agent with a novel mechanism of action. So the toxicity profile is also novel. So patients, uh, physicians are familiar to, to use monoclonal antibodies like a tafacitamab. So there may, may be more appeal to use that drug as opposed to selinexor, which is still, is still unknown, is new, uh, uh, in, nobody has used, unless they treated, they treated some myeloma patients with selinexor. So uh, and there are other drugs that are not approved, such as uh, that they're not approved for BLBCL, but doctors are familiar with like uh, lenalidomide. Lenalidomide has activity in, in relaxed refractory DLBCL. Uh, physicians know how to use it because lenalidomide ha is being in the in the market for uh, for quite a while for other conditions such, such as MDS, myelodysplastic syndrome, or Mendelssohn lymphoma, or even multiple myeloma. So for me, uh, doc, physicians are, are very familiar with it. And even if it's not approved, actually, we, uh, personally, I don't see any issues with insurance approval other than the copays that sometimes you can see with this drug. So in general, I think um, the, uh, 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 when, when, you, when, when using Selinex or physicians have to make sure that they know about the efficacy and they know about the toxicity too, so that patients are not surprised and they're managed, they're managed appropriately. 